Hey everyone, I'm Steve from GamersNexus.net and this is our CPU benchmark for Fallout 4, which is now a full day old, so obviously that means the game has become irrelevant in the eyes of the greater games industry, but we have a bit of content left in Fallout 4 before moving on to whatever the next things may be. And some of that content includes our CPU benchmark, which I just conducted. You can find the full article linked in the description below. And the CPU benchmark basically just takes all the CPUs that we had available. And if it's not on the charts, then we probably don't have it. So the CPUs tested include the G3258 at the low end for Intel, the A10-7870K at the low end for AMD, and then a number of i3s, i5s, i7s, and AMD FX CPUs, including the FX9000 and 8000 series. So that's our listing of products. You can check the full article link in the description below for more methodology on how we conducted the tests. But we did opt to use the GTX 980 Ti Hybrid, which is an EVGA card. And we used that because it's our best performing single GPU solution. So we wanted to obviously eliminate GPU bottlenecks wherever possible. Now, Fallout 4 is pretty aggressive on the GPU consumption, so even the 980 Ti Hybrid does bottleneck at some points, like at the higher settings and higher resolutions. So it's not entirely possible to eliminate a bottleneck on the GPU right now with Fallout 4, but we got pretty close in terms of just being able to see the absolute performance data between the CPUs and get a good feeling for where everything falls. Our hypothesis going into this was that the i5 and the i7 would be pretty similar in performance just from a purely theoretical standpoint. That's kind of what I was expecting going into the test. So we tested the i3-4130, the i5-4690K, and the i7-4790K, which are all the same generation CPUs, alongside our other CPUs tested, and looked to them to determine where the differences lie. And the i3 I was expecting to perform pretty well, but certainly lower than the i5 and the i7. The i5 and the i7 I was expecting to perform very similarly. So let's look at the data and see how it actually panned out in reality. 1440p at Ultra is a fairly GPU intensive test, so do keep that in mind. But we still wanted to run it and see what the delta was between the CPUs with the provision that there would be some GPU limitation. The 1440 Ultra test shows the FPS output is limited to about 83 FPS on the 4790K and the 5930K. And if we move down to the i5 CPUs, the 6600K and 4690K, the frame rate drops a considerable amount at 15.6-ish percent. So that's a pretty big delta. It still remains above 60 FPS though, and that's all that really matters for this game because of the game time and physics tie to FPS. So considering this, Greater than 60 FPS playback for anything other than benchmarking isn't really too important. And once you change the GPU from the 980Ti hybrid to something else, that 15.58% delta could come into play a lot more. So if you downclass the GPU from what we used here, do calculate that in to make sure that you're still staying above board on the frame rate. So keep GPU in choice in mind when looking at these charts. The FX 9590 technically plays at 1440 Ultra, but we face severe frame drops and stuttering with the CPU. And that's a trait characteristic of the 9590's high TDP. We found this to be true in other games as well, so this is not a unique Fallout 4 issue, but the frame drops are severe enough that we'd probably drop the settings down if I were actually to play this game with the 9590 so that the stuttering and the frame drops are less severe. And then the i3 falls far from the i7 starting point, dropping 44% against the i7 and 29% against the i5, quite a difference in both regards. At 1440, we see nearly a 30% performance advantage awarded to the i5 CPUs over the i3 CPUs. And the 5930K exhibits stronger low frame times than its non-extreme cousins. So if you look at the 5930K, in some of these charts, it will be outperformed by the 4790K, which Again, not a Fallout unique trait because it's happened in other games, certainly, but the difference here is really made in the low frame times, the 1% and 0.1% frame times. As we move into 1080p, we keep the same ultra settings but drop resolution quite a bit so the pixel count is way lower. And we see a higher FPS output, obviously, but there's still a pretty big performance curve, so the delta between all these CPUs is still large and there's not great scaling for Fallout 4 across our CPU lineup. If you look at the i7-4790K and the i5-4690K, same generation, both Devil's Canyon, both refreshed Haswell, there's a frame rate drop 
of 17% from the i7 to the i5. Again, a pretty big drop. And the performance advantage of the 4790K over the 5930K is, again, reflected in a few games. So this isn't abnormal to see the 4790 trading blows with the 5930. And the 5930K can be beaten out by the 4790K depending upon thread utilization and game optimization for each game tested. And the same goes for the 6600K against the 4690K where you sometimes see a maybe one FPS drop in performance with the 6600 because of a latency increase in the Skylake memory subsystem or some other sort of transactional bus latency. And this is reflected in our 6700K benchmarks as well. The i3 at 1080 Ultra is <laughs> presented with a massive bottleneck of about 54% against the i7. And when we look at the i5 pairing, the bottleneck is still about 37%. So that's a big difference between an i3 and an i5. And the big hits continue and remain the case with the 9590 AMD's high-end FX CPU with low frame times in the 16 for 0.1% lows. And these are noticeable enough to impact play. So that's, again, some sort of frame drop stuttering issue. And then finally, we look at some of the medium benchmarks just to get a better feel for things and eliminate more of the GPU bottleneck. And some of the CPUs here are equalizing due to the load on the GPU and CPU sort of mixing, load mixing on the game side. But the performance gap still exists. The i3 to i5 to i7 delta is in order. 29% from the i3 to i5, 24.6% from the i5 to the i7. So still a big difference. And AMD's 9590 is its best performer, of course. But even the 220 watt TDP $200 CPU loses to Intel's 4690K by 20% in the frame rate delta. The 5930K, again, allows for higher 0.1% low frame rates. Fallout 4 is on the pretty aged and somewhat decrepit creation engine, and that engine definitely is showing its age with regard to optimization on the GPU and the CPU sides. So this delta is, from our testing, pretty tied to frequency. Fallout 4 is a very frequency-hungry game, Obviously, you look at AMD, and that's, it, there's some architecture that matters too, because AMD does have a higher raw frequency. But the architecture is so different, it's not linearly comparable to Intel's architecture. So keep that in mind. But raw frequency is what matters after architecture, of course. And the game does utilize threads a bit. It utilizes hyper-threading, even. It's just poorly optimized, so we see some odd performance and some spurious positioning of the i3 and the i5 and things like that. So then the important part, the i3 can get by on some settings depending on what you're running and obviously what your GPU pairing is, but it will bottleneck mid-range and high-end GPUs. So you don't, don't want to buy a high-end or mid-range GPU, put it with a, an i3 CPU, and just choke your frame rate heavily because of that. The i5 has about a 30% delta against the i7 in some cases, 17% in others, so a pretty big difference actually in this game. And that was not something that I expected to find. Looking at AMD's high-end CPUs, the 9590 in this case, the low frame rates are pretty poor, and that's just really an issue with the CPU itself. So you, you encounter that at some setting levels, but not all of them, and it can be worked with. It's just, it's not great, and it's the smoothness of gameplay is pretty poor at times at 1440 and 1080 maxed. So that is all for our CPU benchmark on Fallout 4. Check out the GPU benchmark, the volumetric lighting benchmark, the texture quality comparison, all that stuff. And of course, hit the Patreon link in the post roll video down here if you want to help us out in creating more content like this. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all next time. <laughs>